Thank you so very, very much. It's a very great uh, honor to have been asked to address such a distinguished group of human beings. You, you didn't say what some sometimes say when they, when they are introducing you. They say, uh, well, or no, he, he does not uh, really need to be introduced. Uh, everybody or nearly everybody should, should be knowing, knowing him. But I, I, was, I was in San Francisco a few, uh, a few years ago when a, a, uh, a lovely woman came up to me and she was quite effusive uh, and, 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 and greeted me very warmly. Hello, Archbishop Mandela. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> Sort of getting two for the price of one. <coughs> as you also can see, I'm, I'm not as young as I look. Um, a few years ago, they named a school after me in a very small village in, in the Netherlands. That's not the important part of the story. The school was celebrating its 400th anniversary. And my wife and I uh, arrive in this village, and a little girl comes up to me and says, were you here when the school started? <laughs> uh, I, I thought I, I, I was decrepit, but I hadn't thought um, it was quite so obvious. <laughs> well, in the, in the several years of uh, being on this planet, I, I have seen some quite interesting things. Uh, and one, one of these being, uh, just as a point of reference, how women have begun to come into their own. I mean, when you think that for quite a while um, in the last century, uh, women were, were without... Um, the vote. Um, it's, it's quite something to think of just how they, they have made up for having been hamstrung to such an extent as they were. And you know how most, most of um, us uh, might have said, well, uh, the, the, the the right place for a woman is in the kitchen. Uh -huh. Well, today, if you, if you gave expression to such horrendous male chauvinism, uh, you would very soon be uh, banished to Siberia. Um, and just think, I mean, how in, 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 in just the last century, we we've begun to accept things that just a little while before were regarded as quite contrary to how God had ordered the universe. You've had women become prime ministers. This country saw someone who was lauded as uh, um, uh, the Iron Lady. Um, and I think many, many people um, in, in this country were very, were very chuffed by how uh, she dealt with the trade unions, I think. Um, Germany has had uh, or has uh, a woman chancellor. Um, in the United States, they now have the third successive uh, Secretary of State uh, being a woman, um, and and then even even more well unthinkable in uh, when you when you consider these things, they've now got a black man in the White House. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I, I, America, America is a crazy country. I mean, 
in some ways, because it's the same country where a black man is, is, it can, it can be dragged, as has happened, dragged behind a truck to his death. And yet it's that country that can, can do what, until it happened, seemed so utterly unconceivable. No, 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 not unconceivable, it's not English. Inconceivable, it's unconceivable, inconceivable. <laughs> it's not my mother tongue. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, there you are. I mean, just a few years ago, you had the civil rights movement. Uh, and you still do have the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, and, and you have all of the things that happen that uh, you would think you were in a racist uh, state. But they have done the quite incredible to make a man who is regarded as being the most powerful human being on earth, uh, black. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just incredible. I mean, and when, when you think, too, about, about South Africa, I mean, this is the country that just a few, a few years ago used to have road signs that said, Drive carefully. Natives, ourselves, natives cross here. Uh, and, 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 and some of these wags change the sign to read, uh, drive carefully. Natives very cross here. Um, <coughs> but just a few years ago, they were saying Nelson Mandela is a terrorist. Now everybody wants a piece of him, that he is regarded, and quite rightly regarded, as a moral colossus. Um, and have you thought, I mean, if, if the wise men, we say there are three, but the Bible doesn't actually say there are three. Uh, they say three because they count the gifts that the wise men gave, and there are three gifts. Okay, three wise men. Uh, three wise men. If they had a GPS, they would not have got lost. <laughs> and they would not have had to go to uh, King Herod. We have, I mean, very few of us, I mean, there's this wonderful lady, turn right, and you don't turn right. And she said, I mean, she swears at you under her breath, and, and at, the, at, the, at the next opportunity, turn right, I said. <laughs> and you turn right, and you turn right, and you do the things, and you arrive. I mean, can you think? I mean, look at computers and the IT revolution. We, I mean, many of the things that we thought were science fiction, now we take, take very much for granted. And look at, our, I mean, Obama used, used the, the internet to very, very good effect. Uh, even just in terms of fundraising. Uh, and then the social networking of Facebook that makes, I mean, they, they can destroy a person. I mean, they can destroy a, a, uh, a, a politician in next to no time. Or they can Ghana in incredible support. And just look at how they are able to raise funds for very worthy causes. Right. Uh, all I, I've done there is providing a kind of preamble. Just 
a week ago, I was sitting with people who speak about e-health. Um, and amazing, amazing that some of the most complex uh, operations, medic, uh, surgical operations, can be performed at a distance. You know, you don't need to have the, the skilled surgeon going to Timbuktu. They can have some doctors there uh, with some reasonable training, and, and this person sits here and, and guides them through the operation. And just think how we could actually eradicate poverty. We could eradicate most of the diseases. And this is what e-health is, is, is about. So I, I'm, I'm saying, this is, this is just to say, you see how you want, and most of you, no, all of you, uh, are people who think boldly, adventurously, people who are ready to change paradigms. Um, you are decision makers, shakers and movers, all of you. You head up impressive business organizations, and some of which are real conglomerates. And then, what do they say mostly about you? <clears throat> They would say about you that your major concern is the so-called bottom line. Profit, silly. Which is what your shareholders care about. But I think you will concur with me that you are not primarily financial decision makers. No. My thesis, which is one that I believe you would accept, is that you are primarily, fundamentally, ethical, moral beings. Because, you see, God created us so that we are, in a way, wired, programmed to make decisions Adam and Eve. Will we or will we not eat what has come to be regarded as an apple? Will we or will we not obey, obey God is the fundamental structure of who you and I are. That the fundamental decisions that you make long before you were going to be making those that affect your bottom line are ethical, moral decisions. Decisions about good or bad. Right or wrong. Because, you see, if your obsession was merely about the bottom line, about profit-making, why not participate in the drug trade? I mean, your, 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 your profits would be phenomenal. Why don't you invest in the so-called oldest profession in the world? Your profits would be staggering because the ladies of the night, in a manner of speaking, uh, don't lack for customers ever. But 
You don't because you have made the primary decision that your business, so far as you can, is going to be clean morally. So most of you, no, 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 obviously all of you have become increasingly socially responsible as a matter of principle. Most of you, no, all of you, uh, for instance, ecologically, environmentally responsible. We hope you would be. Isn't it, isn't it quite something, I mean, that we are put very firmly in our place by God? You know, just when we are thinking maybe we, we are beginning to become quite hoity-toity, I mean, I was speaking about all of the very significant advances that we have made, and they are significant, and they can actually begin to make you wonder whether this thing called God is necessary. And then, and then an earthquake happens. And then a volcano erupts. And we, with all of our abilities, are rendered impotent, really. But yes, we are saying now most businesses believe that you have to be green. You have to be concerned about your carbon footprint, about pollution. And just now there is all this horrible business about the, the oil spill. And usually, if you are environmentally, ecologically correct, that often will impact on, on your profits. But you are willing to accept that reduction. And <clears throat> I know, I mean, just how many of your companies, if not all of them, how many have a budget line which will refer to scholarships and project funds that are available for the less well-to-do of our communities as an integral part of your business. So, I, I have, I hope, established uh, this point that you are first and foremost moral, ethical beings and would be appalled at what were unethical and immoral ways of operating or immoral attitudes that people might have. And and you know that in our world you are going to have to be because there are some incredible watchdogs out there. Some, some, some have, for instance, tried to take advantage of low wages in developing countries where they have employed child labor. Well, they very, very quickly wish they hadn't because right around the world now, there are those watchdogs who ensure that if you don't tow the line, then yes, your bottom line is going to reflect that. 
We inhabit a world of gross inequalities. And you know as well as anyone does that those inequalities contribute to producing instability. And nothing is more inimical of profits, of good business, than instability. I have had an obsession um, in most of, you know, most of the places that I've, I've spoken. Uh, I sound like a, a, a cracked record with the needle stuck. That's long before you had DVDs and things of that kind. Uh, and I'm, I must say, I am appalled, and I would hope that you too can begin to be appalled at, the, at what can only be called obscene investments in budgets of death. Many, many countries speak about their defense budgets. I'm not going to refer to any country. I'm, I'm, I'm sufficiently... Yes, well, we, I have a bit of political nous um, and, and will not give you examples. You, you know the examples. All of, our, all of the countries, even poor countries, invest billions of dollars in what can only be called budgets of death and destruction to produce bombs, to produce nuclear submarines, to produce this, that, and the other, made for killing. When we know that a very minute fraction of those budgets would ensure that children everywhere would have enough clean water to drink and not die for lack of such clean water. They would have enough food to eat. They would have enough, they would have adequate, decent homes, health care, and good education. Today, this is what UNICEF says, today, as you and I sit here, 24,000 children are going to die today. They're going to die just because they, their parents cannot afford or their country cannot afford quite inexpensive vaccinations, inoculations. They're going to die because their parents cannot produce food for them to eat. Developing countries are often exhorted, produce more, man, produce more uh, trade, export, and, and earn, earn export um, uh, dollars, hard currency which will then be used in your countries, and they try. And then, and then they hit up against, and this is called free enterprise. Free enterprise, and they hit their heads against trade barriers. This is one of the most unbelievable statistics that the European Union gives two 
$2.5 dollars a subsidy for each cow to farmers in the European market, European Union. A billion people in the world earn less than one dollar a day. Developing countries are then priced out of the market because their produce is more expensive than the one where the farmers are given substantial bonuses, subsidies. Now, there's no question at all that the developing countries, many, many of them, are plagued by unaccountable governments, are, are plagued by corruption, where a small elite robs their country's wealth, and the bulk of the population live in a desert of numbing poverty, where just a very minute elite is filthy rich. So you see, dear friends, the eradication of poverty is not just a philanthropic act. It is actually good business practice because the more countries there are that are prosperous, the more prospective customers for manufactured goods. And prosperous countries tend to be more stable politically. So helping others is good ethically and economically. It helps the bottom line. Ethical business is good business. Now, I, I, I'm, I mustn't raise your hackles too much. Uh, but I, I do have a very real concern about capitalism. Certainly the, the kind that one has been exposed to, that it battens on eat or be eaten. It battens on high levels of competitiveness and not just being better than, but you want to rub your opponents or your rivals, you want to rub them in the dust. That the worst thing in our kind of societies is, a, is, is, to, is to fail. Success, success in whatever is something that we seek after like the Holy Grail, where stomach ulcers become status symbols. I, I, would, I, would, I would hope that you would say there is something wrong in a system that can see someone. I, I, I mean, these figures may be wrong, but they, they appeared in a report um, about this particular business. 
the Goldman Sachs thing. And I read that one of the directors general or whatever they are called, CEO, took away one year as his salary, 64 million, 64 million dollars. Well, yeah. <laughs> Can I propose that you consider something African? The, it's, it's, it's a term that does not have a precise uh, English equivalent. There is something in our culture called Ubuntu. Ubuntu. The essence of being human. Ubuntu. Ubuntu says a person is a person through other persons. Now, those of you who are psychologists know that that, that is obvious. I mean, I wouldn't know how to speak as a human being except by learning from other human beings. I wouldn't know how to walk. I wouldn't know how to think. Yes, I wouldn't know how to be human. I learn how to be human from other human beings. I need you in order for me to be me. In the Bible, God said, it is not good for this man to be alone. And so Eve came along. that you and I are made really for togetherness. And the Bible makes, <laughs> that's my primary source. Uh, it might not be yours, but I mean, I'm, I'm allowed to use it. Uh, the, the Bible describes us as coming from one set of parents that were family. And you know what? <laughs> Archaeology has discovered that that is true. And what is more, you are, you are going to have to be nice to me. You are going to have to be nice to me because we are all Africans. So if you're feeling a little hoity-toity about, about not being African, sorry. <laughs> Your DNA gives you away. You come from Africa. But let's put that aside. <laughs> the fact of the matter is when you think that the other is enemy and can be eliminated or whatever, in an incredible way. We certainly saw that. You know, when, when, when you dehumanize another, it's quite incredible just how in that process you yourself are dehumanized. You need me. <laughs> you need me to be you. And just, just think about this concept. It's not, it's not a figure of speech. It's for real. So those of you who are Christians say, you don't say, my father. Say, our father. And, and you know what? Jesus is crucified and he, he, he resurrects and meets with 
a woman, Mary Magdalene. Now, you would have expected him to say, Mary, go and tell those so-and-sos who one of them uh, uh, betrayed him another, denied him three times, and they all ran away. He doesn't. He says, go and tell my brothers. Go and tell my brothers that I am ascending to my God and their God. I am ascending to my father and their father. <laughs> Wonderful. Especially, I mean, when you, when you, I, I look at all my, my, uh, the family, the members of my family, you, uh, and, and, and I know what your bank balances look like. Uh, it would be, be very nice. But really, but really, I'm finishing, I'm finishing, I'm finishing. I see you're getting, you're getting a little, you're getting a little agitated. I'm finishing. Imagine, just imagine if we all accepted what is this fundamental truth. I am not doing you a favor when I help you out of the ditch. I'm not doing you a favor. It is my duty to a member of my family. And this family, you know, Jesus said, if I, if I be lifted up, will draw, he didn't say some. He says all, all, rich, poor, white, black, clever, not so clever, beautiful, not so beautiful. Uh, it's actually one of the most radical things that Jesus said. Because it says, been laden, been laden. Taliban, George Bush, all, 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 all. <laughs> Gay, lesbian, so-called straight, all, 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 all. Martin Luther King said, if we don't learn to live together as brothers, we will add now today, uh, and sisters, we are going to perish together like fools. <laughs>